Hello and welcome to Supercars of London. And today I'm hooning my car. <laughs> I'm joking. Today I want to talk to you about the driving experience of the Audi R8. I've done a few reviews but never really felt that I'm being capable enough to talk to you in detail and depth about what this car is like to drive on a day-to-day -day basis. Things like starting the car up, having the traction control on, having the traction control off, but also things like having cold tyres when you first start the car and you're driving down the road on a wet, slippery road and what could happen. When you're driving through the French Alps on 28 degrees in a fantastic satin Nardo grey car, keeping up with the rear wheel drive Ferraris in front because you've got the Quattro system. And overall, I hope that this gives a more well-rounded explanation into the sort of technical sides of driving this car, the Quattro system, the traction control, and all of the stuff that you have to think about when getting in this car so that you don't end up in a bush. Subject number one when you start the car up and it's completely cold, you have to think about cold tires and cold tarmac. When, when I first bought this car, I had no idea what that meant or why it was important. And in this car with a 70-30 um, split, 70 in the rear, 30 in the front on the Quattro system, this car is very fidgety when you have cold tires. But as you move off from the mark and you start the car up, you're automatically put with the traction control on, you've got the Quattro system, you're in that Audi R8 safety cocoon, which is a fantastic place to be, especially if you're not that most of an experienced driver. However, if you're stupid enough to do something like turn the traction control off with cold tarmac and cold tires sometimes, you get something like this. <laughs> that was like some sort of slow motion power slide. Subject number two is uh, warm tyres and this is a huge, huge advantage to cold tyres and I learned this pretty quickly when I was out in Monaco and then in, in the in European roads where the sun was fantastic, it was beating down on the tarmac and it took not so long for my tyres to warm up and when the rubber hits the tarmac and you've got fantastic grip then it just becomes an absolute dream to drive. I had the traction control on at all times because there was no sort of lack of grip, there was no need for the traction control to kick in when I was coming around a roundabout or coming through a hairpin and things like that. And that's what really won me over when I was driving in Europe was the fact that you could push this car a little bit more to the limits than you can here in the UK. The roads here are awful in terms of the surface. I posted a few pictures on Instagram, utterly dreadful. Whereas in Europe, France was the best. France had the most amazing motorways. Switzerland also had some great roads, but you had to be very, very respectful of the speed limits. Um, which we were very respectful of in all of the countries that we went to. Even Germany, when we were on the Autobahn, I respected the um, unlimited speed limit there. And I think France overall was the best sort of place to drive because the mountain roads were so smooth and then Italy, surprisingly, not that great. Driving this car with warm tyres, it turns it into its, a, its completely different personality. When it's got cold tyres, it's angry, it's moody, it doesn't want to go, it doesn't want to wake up. And um, if you're awake more than the car with cold tyres, rip your head off. But when you've got the warm tyres on, it's like, boom, come on, give me your best shot, go on, take me taken me and um, yeah takes it well actually good car let's talk quickly about the traction control on this car because a lot of people have spoken to me about how good it is do you drive the traction on do you drive the traction off and there's definitely moments and times and places to drive with both of them on and off most of the time you drive with the traction control on Whoa. 
I reckon there's about 1% of the time that you need to drive with the traction control off and that's, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that probably disagree with that. There's no way that I want to catch myself at 30, 40 miles an hour and find myself going sideways round and round about. That is my idea of a nightmare. So 99% of the time I drive with the traction control off which is, which is fine. There's only a real sort of small percentage of the time when I decide to turn the traction control off and that's normally when it's damp on the road, it's damp on the road and I know that if I want to put my foot down the accelerator will, the traction will kick in and sort of be able to slap me on the wrist, what are you doing, why are you putting your foot down? So I normally turn the traction control off when the tarmac's quite damp but I know that I've been driving the car for quite a long time so I've got warm tyres and there's a sort of element of grip there but it also gives me that sort of sense of thrill that I'm driving and I'm coming out of a turn and the back end will wiggle a bit. I'll be like, that must have looked really cool from the car behind. <laughs> so that is really what, where and when I drive with the traction control on and off. But it's a really sophisticated system, as you can imagine, in um, all the Audis, but especially in the R8, because it's got a huge load of power, you really have to hone in on how you manage that power. And I do wonder sometimes, because the V10 R8 is that slightly little bit more powerful, how does the traction control work? It's obviously not the same traction control in this car, because if it was, the, the wheels would just spin up because it's just that slightly little bit more power. And I'm probably acting as a real sort of airhead there. But I do wonder how balanced the V10 and the traction control is, or I wonder how bad it would be in the wet. I don't want to find out if I'm honest, but this car is a real handful in the wet. Traction on or traction off, I can I find myself going sideways at the most unconvenient times. At the most inconvenient times. When I first started driving this car, I was so nervous as to whether I was going to crash it, how this car handled, and I never actually sort of sat down in this car, went for a drive, and just experienced how fun it was. So now, let's talk about what it's like to put your foot down in this car. How does the torque feel? But also, how does the power change as you're going through the rev range? So I'm building up now, probably doing like 30% throttle, 40, 50, the valve's open. So at the low end, you just get this sort of And then at the high end, once that's matched with the Army Trix exhaust system, you feel like you're in some sort of crazy Formula 1 car. Put it down again. 